Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present to you all. Um, I'm going to keep this at, uh, at different levels. So there's going to be some for beginner uh, and maybe even some for advanced. So hopefully everyone here, wherever you're at uh, in your WordPress journey, I think you'll get some value out of it. So let me just quickly, oh, it says uh, I need to be uh, able to screen share. Can you give me that? Okay, cool. All right. Let me move this side. Okay. So I have my, uh, I, I did create a little presentation. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna, I only have like seven slides, so it's not gonna be a ton. Uh, I mostly wanted to do a live demonstration for y'all, um, but uh, David mentioned that I'm from Beaver Builder. Uh, so I'm the director of marketing here at Beaver Builder and I've been with the company for about four years now. Um, but uh, prior to working at Beaver Builder, uh, I, 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 I was, I basically taught myself WordPress. Um, and this was, I think, back in 2016, no, two, I'm sorry, 2009 or something like that. I can't remember, it's been a while. But since that time, um, I've done a lot of different things with WordPress and uh, just kind of wanted to show you a little bit of my background, just so you know. Um, so I had a website called Marketing Access Pass where I had a podcast, I did some blogging. And then I started doing some web design for clients. Um, so selling, uh, building cl uh, client projects. Um, and then I even have a WordPress support business called Access WP where we do maintenance and stuff like that. So um, I bring this to your attention um, mainly because these two sites are actually built with Beaver Builder. So I've built my entire business with Beaver Builder and um, now I work for Beaver Builder. So that's kind of how it all uh, comes full circle, I guess. And um, this, this presentation is not gonna be like a pitch, a sales pitch of anything. Um, I really wanted just to give you some value. I wanted to do a live demonstration and obviously do some Q and A if you had any questions. And what I, what I wanna bring to the table and hope you can learn from this is, um, when I started working on WordPress, I found a, a, a distinct problem. And that was, uh, I wanted to be able to work on a website that uh, is flexible, where I can use it on, build a, a website on WordPress in many different avenues. So before I, you know, I had to find a certain theme um, and try to match it for that certain project. But now I, I use basically one theme, one builder for anything. I can build blogs, I can build WooCommerce sites, membership sites, uh, service sites, uh, blogs, you name it, um, I can do it. And this was great for me and my business because uh, not only was it really easy to use, but it allowed me to train team members to build, to use it as well. And it was intuitive enough for me to even train my wife who's has no experience in uh, marketing or building websites before. And we've basically been able to do it uh, without coding. I, I don't come from any background of coding. I'm not a computer science person. Um, and I just basically learned how to build Beaver Builder, or I'm sorry, build websites using Beaver Builder because it's, it's all front end visual drag and drop. So I will show you uh, that in a second. So I, I kind of mentioned this Beaver Builder really solved my problem as a freelancer and as a marketer, because before this, I was constantly having to learn how to use new themes, new builders, and it was just, I spent a lot of time in the uh, trenches versus actually working on my business. And so uh, it allowed me to scale it and allowed me to um, continue to provide support for my, my clients as well. So as mentioned, it's front end, drag and drop. You don't have to know how to code to use it. Uh, you can start with a clean slate or you can use templates and it's really fast. So some people who are really concerned with like uh, performance, um, this builder works really fast. Uh, I have sites that load for less than a second. It's also mobile friendly. Um, and like I said, you can easily train 
uh, people to use it. I'm just going to pause for a second to see if there's any questions or comments. Um, I tend to kind of flow through things pretty, pretty quickly. No? All right, cool. Um, as mentioned, they do have templates. So not only do we have landing page templates, but we also have um, co inner content page templates like about pages, contact pages, et cetera. There's also a pre-built row template. So like if you're looking for a certain header, uh, call to action, things like that. And I'll, I'll show all of this in a second. And you can also create your own templates as well. So it's very versatile uh, to kind of quickly get you going um, creating websites. And I'll kind of go through some of these productivity tips. And I'm, more importantly, I'm just going to have to show you because it's kind of hard to just explain. Um, and just to kind of show you, for as far as traffic wise, because there's this weird misconception out there that page builders are not good for SEO or something like that, um, which is not true. Um, I could ex basically explain to you that um, even my personal website in the last 30 days gets uh, over 100,000 page views. So just to sh show proof that, you know, uh, SEO is not a problem with Beaver Builder or page builders. So, um, so I'm going to start with a blank slate. You can see here, this is a blank WordPress install. There's no uh, plugins except for Beaver Builder products and Classic Editor. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know how to use Gutenberg, so I use Classic. And the other theme that I'm using here is um, Beaver Builder. So we, although Beaver Builder can be used with many themes, um, I just personally use the Beaver Builder theme. So. And uh, let's see it in action, right? So basically, Beaver Builder is a front end page builder. So everything uh, is drag and drop. So you can see when I open up the Beaver Builder uh, page builder, I could start to add modules. And basically, when I open this up, you'll see a menu of common use modules. Like, let's say I needed to add a button, I just simply click it, drag it, and I drop it in there. And then it pulls up a button, and I can simply type something and what you see is what you get. So it's really fast, you know, and you can see it in action and you can play around with it. And uh, if you need to change colors, uh, it allows you to have a color picker. Um, you can see that I can, um, I can stylize the button, change the text. So if I need to change the font, you can see here, I can select different fonts. Um, I can change the different sizes. Um, it's very intuitive in that sense. And then essentially I can save it. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, you can use templates, as I mentioned. So we have templates. Uh, it's a tab right here. You can open up and we can just simply click on a template and I can use it. So I'm just going to click here. And you can see once I push the template, it, it automatically pulls everything in. And the template is very customizable as well. So I could, you know, change, uh, type in some verbiage. You can see it in the background. I can always move this aside. Um, and of course, you can remove areas that you don't need. So I can always move this up and down. If I don't like it, I can delete it. Uh, I can even, let's see if I wanted to add additional columns, I can add like a two column layout here. So I can pull this content block into this here, maybe move this into here. So you can see it's very, you know, intuitive, I like to think. It's, uh, you can move things around very easily and expand and change things. Um, and you, like I said, you have a lot of templates to work with. The other thing I mentioned was there's content page templates. So if, like to say I needed to create an about page really quickly, I can just use one of the templates, create an about page. So theoretically I could probably create a, um, you know, a five page website using these templates in just a few minutes. And I could swap out pictures, change these names, and you'll be able to create a website really easily.
Has any has has anyone here used uh, Beaver Builder or other page builders? I see someone's hand raised up. Erin raised her hand. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, I used it. I was rebuilding a site and actually used it extensively. But uh, like I was talking to David, I had trouble with my images not coming in at good quality. And so I had to abandon the whole Beaver Builder and move to Squarespace. Oh, I know. Sorry to hear that, but uh, I used to a lot. Help you with, we can help you with images. It's not, uh, I don't think it's a Beaver Builder issue. It might be something else that. that That's what we kind problems. of figured that it was probably something else. It might have been. I tried different servers, but I used it a lot. I did like it as um, that was probably, that was before COVID, probably three years ago. What has changed since I, then? I, I, think, I think what we figured out was that from 5.3 on, from WordPress 5.3 on, WordPress limits image dimensions to no more than uh, 2560 pixels, 2560 pixel, pixels, either in height or width. Uh, and it's it's a little known. It was a little known thing, and there is a ways to override it. And some of the image optimization plugins mm -hmm. offer the option of overriding it. But if you upload an image that's greater than that in size, yeah, WordPress will clip it, and you'll actually it'll even actually rename the the image, like the the uh, the, the file name, huh. will actually have dash clipped on the end of it. Huh. That's yeah. right. So. Well, I yeah. Um, it turned out even in Squarespace, I had to do a lot of finagling to get the, because they have a limit on how large your files, your image files can be. It can, nothing could be more than 500 megs or it has a fit. <laughs> so, but anyway, I like to be rebuilt. I, I was, uh, what has, have some things changed? I imagine several, a lot of things have changed in the last Yes, uh, we've had we definitely added more templates. Um, we've added more uh, pre-built rows, um, kind of like I was mentioning. So, for example, let's say you're creating a new hero image. You know, you can select something like this, oops, um, and you can just pull it into here um, and change things around. So we definitely have that. We've we've definitely worked a lot on our speed because that was a uh, it was an SEO I guess criteria and people obviously wanted needed that um, for performance for client performance um, so speed was a big thing uh, we've also just done a lot of uh, tweaks to the interface to make it more user friendly um, it's hard for me to go through all of them at this at this time but um, it's it's definitely a, a product that's been around for like seven years. Uh, a lot of people have used it. So we have a very large community, which is nice because if you ever do have questions like that, you know, we have a free Facebook group, we have a community forum, we have a knowledge-based site. So there's a ton of resources. We have a lot of YouTube video tutorials now, and we have free courses that are available on our site. So if any of you just want to learn how to use Beaver Builder, I invite you to come to Beaver Builder and go to uh, resources and where it says courses. Um, you can go here. We have six free courses. So you can use how to use a page builder. Uh, we have one course that we build a website from beginning to end and you can just follow along and, and do it. So uh, there's a lot of valuable uh, resources available in, in, a, in a really friendly community that be willing to help you along the way. And a great YouTube channel too. Oh yes, yeah. So we have a uh, we really built up our YouTube channel uh, the past couple of years. So there's a ton of video tutorials. Uh, we have playlists for specific products. Um, so you can definitely definitely watch uh, as we teach you step by step. So it's 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 easy and friendly for beginners, but it's also powerful for advanced users. You can customize everything. You can, you know, if you needed to do custom coding, it's all uh, available. You can do that. So, 
Do you have any other questions, um, maybe about Beaver Builder or WordPress? Um, I could also talk about Assistant if we're ready to move on to that. So is there a place in the editor where you can add CSS or, or is that, do you still just do that through the customizer? So yes, there is. Uh, the CSS can be added through the customizer, which is one area right here. Right. So you can add your CSS code. Um, there's also, if you wanted to, I want to say if you want to customize specific modules, there should be an area that, There's some questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, where was it? I'll have to find that answer for you. I just can't remember exactly. I use okay. all my CSS yeah. in the customizer. <laughs> and and does it show up? A... And and does it show up in the editor, or do you have to look at the the real front end view? Um, you mean like, like when you're editing customizer? right now, right in, in here, if I put something into the customizer and CSS in there, does it show up in there? Oh, it sh yes. It shows up real time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm not a, like I said, I'm not a coder, so I don't do CSS. So if I, if I could throw some code in there, I would, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a marketer. <laughs> Yeah, I remember there was a uh, custom CSS and they helped me, um, your support was really good. They helped me do a few things using the custom CSS in the modules, yes. right? You know, yes. it was yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a way to do it. Um, I just don't, I don't know off the top of my head because like I said, I don't, all my websites, I don't do custom coding. I just use the out of the box Beaver Builder and it's, it served me well. I, I've been able to do pretty much everything I wanted to do um, for the most part. All right. Well, um, these were kind of the main things that I wanted to just show uh, from Beaver Builder. Uh, let me kind of quickly show you a few other items from productivity wise. Uh, we also do responsive editing. So we have the ability to custom, uh, edit in these different views. So we're actually coming out with a fourth view, like a wider view, desktop, tablet, and mobile. So if you see right here, I can adjust settings via just mobile only. Um, let's say this font here, I wanted to make it smaller for specifically only mobile. So I'm just gonna change it to 22. And when you see when I toggle out the, Font settings still remain. Uh, let's see here. Just want to put this like 2032. Oh. Okay, so then I go back. So now when I toggle, oh, it's not working for some reason. Did I do something wrong? Maybe because I'm using this template that's overriding it. Let me see if I do my own. Font text. Okay. And let's say I go really large and then I go mobile not so large and mobile 22. Okay, let's see that. Okay, so, okay, so now you see, you can see I set my font size for large on desktop and then when I start to move it in, uh, what the heck? That is not playing with me right now. 
that was a bad demo. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to it's supposed to stick to the font settings uh, in responsive mode editing. Maybe I might be doing something. It looked like it was doing on the back end. Yeah, I was doing it on the right end. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I was changing it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of show you real quick is um, we have this new plugin. It's called Assistant. Um, you can find it by just searching Assistant for WordPress. And uh, this plugin right here is free. You can use it. And what it does is it allows you to edit items on your website from the front end. So when you do is you install the plugin and it gives you this little pencil icon and you can use this on any website. So you don't have to be a Beaver Builder user. You can use it on other page builders or any WordPress site. And when you click on it, the nice thing is it true to Beaver Builder, we like to do things on the front end. Uh, you can manage a lot of things from this, this area. So for example, um, if you wanted to, this pulls up all your pages and posts. So these are all like posts. posts. So if I click on this, it allows me to quickly jump to my blog post to see it from the front end. Um, I can duplicate this blog post really quickly. Um, I can delete it all from the front end without having to toggle back into the dashboard. You know how back and forth we have to go into our blog posts, our media, everything we have to do is in the back end. Assistant allows you essentially to do a lot of these common admin tasks in the front. Um, so for example, if you wanted to access your media library, everything is here in the front. You can delete it. Um, you, if you, you know, sometimes we need to get the link for the image. You can copy this link and I can pull it and paste it. And you can see the, the link is to the images right there. Um, if I need to edit this in any capacity, it can allow me to jump back into my uh, back end and change the alt text or something. Um, what else? Uh, you can manage comments from the front end. So let's say you, instead of going back and going through your comments, you could you could literally, you know, reply to your um, people who comment on your blog here. You can do it right here, or you could delete it. Um, you know, if it's spam or something, and we can view the. See here, because it's kind of I just deleted the comment. And let's say, what are there some other common things you might need access to? So I had another site here just to pull up just in case. So for example, this site, uh, you know, sometimes you need to update plugins. You can update plugins from the front end. Oops, going too fast. So you see they have this plugin that needs to be updated, just click update. And all this can be done from the front, see, it's just uh, updated this, I updated this. So these are all very, um, I guess, common things that you might need, like get access to pages and posts, uh, update plugins, access your media files. Um, these are all basically available to you for free. Now, what makes Beaver Builder and Assistant very powerful is we also have the ability to, um, you can essentially save, create like a Dropbox for WordPress. So if you go to assistant.pro, we have this new product. Uh, you can sign up for free and it allows you to import and export any design content uh, to the cloud and then use it on another site. So it's kind of hard for me to explain, but basically here's what it looks like when you log in and think Dropbox, right? So let's say I need to create a folder for something. I'm just going to call it um, design images. So I just created a design folder. And from here, I could just start adding content or uh, design files. So let's say I have some images that I need to store and save so that I can use it on future websites. So you can see right here, um, I'm able to add images, backgrounds, stock images, photos, anything that I might want to use later. 
So you're like, okay, well, that's, that's great, but how does this apply to me? So let's say um, I'm using this assistant. I connect it to uh, the I connect it to the cloud library, and you can see right here um, these images that I just imported are now available for me to push into the site. So currently, this site does not have these images in the media folder. Um, you, know, you don't see. I'm going to import one of these images. And it's, I'm going to basically pull it from my cloud library. Let's see here. So let's pull, let's pull this image. Let's pull this image of this, this lovely lady here. And I'm just going to click import. Okay. So it says item has been imported. It's really fast. You can see when I go to my media tab, uh, my media section in the back, should be able to show up now. There it is. I just imported that from this cloud library here. So not only can you import images, you can import um, SVG files, you can import and export templates. So if you're building websites a lot, you can also um, basically use other people's templates. So one of the nice things that we're working on is the ability for people to share their templates in a community. So for example, I have this designer, his name is Paul Lacey, and he shares all these Beaver Builder templates for free. And he says, hey, anyone can use this. I just created it for you guys, check it out. So what we can do is you can just click duplicate And then now uh, the designer um, templates have been imported into my library folder that I can use on my sites. Does everybody follow? So this is a, so this, this is, is really a, cool. Be this is a free plugin, right? This is a free plugin, and you can create a free uh, cloud account. Yes. Oh wow! Now. Uh, the, the premium versions allow you access to like, let's say if you wanna share your files privately to a team member, then you can upgrade to get those uh, features. But everything that I'm doing right now is all from the free account. So you can see right here, this says upgrade. I haven't upgraded. Um, and so this is nice because if you're trying to spin up websites or you're trying to recreate a site or save items in the cloud, you can do it uh, from a free account. So let's just kind of demonstrate this. Um, so I just, someone shared a template. I want to use it on my site. And so I'm going to import this template. Uh, okay. So I have the Paul Lacey's designer files right here. I'm using the assistant plugin and I'm basically going to pull, let's say this homepage template. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to click uh, create and edit. So just give a second and then bam, it pulls this all in, this, this uh, homepage template for me to use. And what's beautiful about this is it also pulls in all these images into my media file. So I'm just gonna go back in here to my media file. And you can see that these images are from the uh, demo or the, the template I just used. So remember, I just imported her first, and then now it pulled in these three other images from the template. So it's a really cool way to, you know, if you have a template that you want to use uh, and save it for future use, or you want to use somebody else's template, there's a lot of different use cases, but essentially you can create and organize um, and create different libraries for various things. So I'm just going to put a little bit of different colors. Let's say I have a brand style guide and I have certain colors that I use all the time. So I now want to, I want to just kind of remind myself of what those color codes are. So you can see right here, I just, it has the color, has the hex code. 
So these are for like people who build websites all the time. You want to kind of reference your brand. Um, you can you can save a lot of different things. Um, so here is style guide, logos, pictures, things that you might use often. So I'm just going to pause for a second because I just kind of like threw a ton of stuff out there. <laughs> Maybe you have questions. That's pretty cool for a free plugin. That's a lot. Yeah, we, we threw yeah. the whole kitchen sink at you. So yeah. we have, you know, like I said, we have this productivity plugin in the front that allows you to do all these cool things I told you in the front end. And then you can also sign up for the cloud, which allows you to import and export design uh, content. Um, and that's all access here. So a lot of free uh, stuff that can just make your life so much easier. You can see I'm doing it via an internet demonstration, which you know, Zoom might be taking some internet power from me, bandwidth. Yeah. So it actually loads a lot faster in real time when you're working on your own. So does it work on a local install? Um, that I'm not sure. Uh, if it's, I, I think I think you need to. Like if I sure if I question. created a site in local by Flywheel, and mm -hmm. spun up a site and loaded up Beaver Builder and then load and then installed the Assistant Pro, would I be able to access my cloud uh, account from there? As long as you have internet, yeah. If you're working locally and you're not connected to the internet, then no, <laughs> right? You have to have internet to be able to push in content from the sure, cloud. Is that sure. kind of what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but there might be some reason the, why it doesn't work. I mean, if 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 the server out there, if you're if the if my cloud account needs to initiate something with my site, it won't be able to find it. You know, if everything if everything is pulled from the local site yeah. or initiated from the local site, I think it, there's a chance it could work if 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 the um, Cloud based, you know, if the server that is uh, that is hosting my um, Beaver Builder account, my my um, assistant account needs to initiate something, it won't be able to find my local site, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as far as like the plugin uh, version, you can use that locally without internet. That should be a problem. It's just a it's just a cloud that may need the connection. And then how do you find like Paul Lacey's things if you were in the assistant there? What oh, do you do to uh there's find... just a tab right here called community? Oh, okay. And right now there are three designers that contributed to some free templates that people can use. So this is uh some really cool pages that people have contributed. But uh, we're looking to launch uh this to be more robust this coming year, the community where a lot of people can contribute and um, share templates. So this is uh, this this is going to be some really new and exciting things coming this year. But as far as the libraries uh, and everything that you see today can can be accessed and used today already. And the nice thing is we have a just like all our other products, we have a ton of video tutorials. So um, you know we have these really short one to five minute video tutorials on how to do. A lot of these things that I'm kind of just demonstrating for you. All right. All right. Could could you go back into the uh, Beaver Builder itself? Sure. And and show how to do responsiveness settings for say a two column row. Okay. I have to say that was a stumbling point for me. It was a little, it's, a, it's a little different than it is in what I'm used to. You know, sure. So let's see. I'm just gonna in go other on. words, when when you go to the different device sizes, those inner containers, you really specify new widths for those inner containers in order to make it collapse. Okay. I think you know what I mean, but other people might not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with a clean slate, so that's just fresh right here. So I'm just going to build out a two column row real quick. Oops. 
can give it some color so it stands out. Oh, it's too bright. Okay. So let's add a text. Should I copy some text from something? Okay, and then I'm just throwing a, let's throw in an image. Okay, so now I have a two column layout. Mm -hmm. So out of the box, uh, Beaver Builder does responsive editing. So you can see it kind of stacks on top of each other naturally, but you can make adjustments to this. Um, so let's do. So you've got three device sizes, right? Is it, is it desktop, tablet, mobile? And then so the nice thing is, uh, let's say I have this photo module and I don't want it to show. For whatever reason, I don't want it to show to mobile. Uh, you can uh, have show, adjust your visibility. So let's say I only want it to show on large and medium devices, not on mobile. This is one particular setting that you could do. So you can see when I move it in, it disappears. But when I pull it back out to tablet and desktop, it reappears. So that's one, one thing that you can do. Um, another thing you can do is you can change the different stacking order. Let's say you're like, you know what? I don't want this to be currently uh, the photo to be at the bottom. Let's say I want the photo to be on the top. So I can change the stacking order. So now when I move it, now the photo's on the top. So that's, for example, um, I would say I can change the width. Uh, was there anything other specific that you wanted me to kind of demonstrate for? Um, so, so when you go, so it does that automatically. I don't remember the site that I took over. It seemed, didn't seem like it was doing that automatically. But <laughs> oh. Yeah. So they, we already comes out of the box. It does responsive. Mm -hmm. It does create a mobile responsive view automatically, but if you wanted to like fine tune the way it looks on mobile, you can do it based off of different screen sizes as well. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then you can also, at, you can take a column and say, I want it to be 80% um, width when you're on mobile, right? Or, or so it's not the full width. There, it is possible to do that, right? So let's say I want this to be, let's say I want this to be, uh, I'm just gonna get this. So I'm just gonna exaggerate, really exaggerate this. Okay, so this spacing is, is normal right now. Mm -hmm. But when I go to responsive editing for mobile, I really increase the the padding right. on the okay. this side, and so I can I can actually adjust the particular for like I said, mobile, desktop, tablet. They can all be uh, adjusted as such. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or let's say I, I go, oh, you know what? This this padding on top is too much. I want to move it up, or I want to change it. You can always adjust it as well. Got it. Yep. So you can see it when I do it now. There's a big space right here. Yep. I think earlier the, the responsive editing didn't stick because I was using a template, and maybe there was some some reasons why it wouldn't hold. But if you're doing it with a clean slate, it just it works just fine. And then, do you guys have a theme? I know that there is Beaver Themer, which is uh, an, an add-on. That's a paid add-on. Right? Yes. Um, if, if, if you were not using Beaver Themer, um, do you guys have a theme or a, a handful of themes you recommend? Oh, um, so Beaver Themer is a add-on plugin that gives you the ability to um, customize 
uh, headers, footers. Um, let me have to demonstrate this because this. So, for example, this this uh, this header right here is actually customized using Beaver Themer. So, I know in WordPress they talk a lot about full site editing and allowing you to basically change any layout on your theme. With Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer combined, uh, you can pretty much do anything that you, you can customize anything. So this is like, for example, a header. Um, and let's say I wanted in my header to, I don't know, have a button. For example, let's just say I have a button right here. So this really opens the door for you. Like if you really want to tweak a header, so, you know, some people like different formats. They like um, the logo to be in the middle. They want to add buttons. They want to add different links. They want to add all kinds of stuff. Um, some themes don't really give you that flexibility. Um, whereas if you use a, uh, something like Beaver Themer, um, it really opens the door. Same thing with the footer. Let's say I have this footer and I want to customize what this looks like. I can pretty much use it with a drag and drop page builder and just really tweak it to however I want. I can add rows, I can add any of these modules. Um, you know, I'm just gonna make it look really ugly, but I'm just gonna throw a photo right here. Let's use, oh, just gonna use anything. Let's say I want this footer to have this photo for whatever reason. Now, when I publish it, all of my footers can have that new layout. Let's see right here. The other thing about this is you can customize where it's shown. So, Let's say I only want this footer to show uh, on certain pages. Well, we have the ability for you to set rules. So let's say the footer, when I go to here, you can set specific location rules. So instead of having an entire site, let's say I go, I only want this footer to show on my homepage, that's it. That's the only page I want to show. So now when I go to the site and I have the footer that I just created, you can see it's here, but if I go to any other page on the site, it should not show. It's no longer there. Before it was, because I had an entire site point. So Beaver Themer really opens the door. Um, you can create custom 404 pages, custom blog post layouts, search pages, all kinds of uh, different things. But um, hopefully that's not over everyone's head. <laughs> no, no, and and, and uh, WooCommerce product layouts. Yes. So you can customize WooCommerce product layouts. So this is actually a site that does use WooCommerce, which is a great reason why I like to demonstrate this. Um, so this is using WooCommerce and I can create, I can customize a product page layout. So same thing with Beaver Builder. I can just hover and adjust things however I like, move things around, and this can be created for specific products, category products. Uh, you can really fine tune it because like I said, that you can create certain rules. Um, if you have, you can, you can set the rules based off of tags, categories, product styles, uh, anything. It, you, you really have an endless amount of uh, creative freedom, really. And when you use Beaver Theme or the Beaver, Beaver Themer is, is not only a plugin, but it also becomes your theme. Is that right? 
uh, you, you it's, can't it's, just uh, edit both. any any. You can't be using say Astra, and then um, At, use Beaver Themer should be able to work with Astra. Yes. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Beaver Themer can be used with a lot of different themes. Um, most of the page builder or the Beaver Builder friendly themes. I think if you Google like Beaver Builder themes. Uh, we do have a blog post out there that talks about a lot of the themes that can be used. Oh, I can't remember the article. Well, there's articles out there. Like people, even Ash should publish one. <laughs> Best WordPress uh, Beaver Builder themes that are compatible. And they, they list a whole bunch. So of course, they, they mention Astra, Beaver Builder, Generate Press, Page Builder Framework. So there's more, but you can always Google search that. All these themes work with Beaver Builder. Right. And the Beaver themer can override override their head headers and footers. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Right. Yep. Yep. Yes. Cool. Well, I think I'm running close to time. Um, is there any other questions that I can answer? Oh, there's there's a bunch of stuff in chat. So, yeah, there's a few things. Mark asked about white label options. Yes, uh, so we have an agency plan that allows you to white label. So you can white label the name of our plugin. So if you have your own, you want to call it your agency framework or agency builder, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Another one was asking about the speed and optimization for mobile phones. Yep. So uh, I kind of shared some of the uh, abilities for you to adjust with mobile. Um, and just uh, let me see if I can share quickly. I had, a, I, had, I had someone reach out to me today. They're like, they were just blown away because they rebuilt a site using Beaver Builder. And he was just raving about how fast it was. <laughs> Let me see if I could share this real quick. I, I'm sure he won't mind um, because he was just so excited. Can we share this? Desktop. All right, so this was literally 10 hours ago. He's like, uh, I was using Divi and I was scoring a B minus uh, with low tra uh, from a really low traffic site. And, and over the last few days, I've totally rebuilt my entire course on Beaver Builder and I launched it. And I'm not using WP Rocket or caching. And then ho holy cow, I'm getting this crazy sp speed score. I don't know what his speed score was before, but he was just telling me how much he <laughs> loves Beaver Builder because it's so fast. So I, I, I like to share real world testimonials versus just, you know, telling you from my from my experience you could also google like beaver builder speed test there's a lot of articles out there that have um uh talked about how fast beaver builder is i think cloudways recently published one um let me see yeah you can google it it, it our site is our our page builder is really fast. What else? What other questions might there see? Oh, how much does it cost? Um, so we have a free version of Beaver Builder called Beaver Builder Lite. And you can just go into your plugin, add, add as a plugin, the plugin repository. You can Google it too. Let me, let me actually link that out to you real quick. So we have a free version called uh, Beaver Builder Lite. Actually, that's a good idea. I should probably link this all into the comments. So this is, you can use a free, page builder called Beaver Builder Lite. Um, our standard version with the plugin with some premium features is starts at $99 a month. Uh, you can use it on un unlimited WordPress sites, which is really nice. There's no cap. And um, we have some, uh, some other tiers that are available like the agency plan. Um, let me just link the free courses if you're interested. There was, we mentioned assistant the persistent plugin, this is free too. You could try it out. Um, and then the assistant pro cloud, uh, this is free for you to sign as well. So 
I just want to kind of just, like I said, I, I really want to just, uh, you know, just share with you information. I'm not trying to sell you anything. So uh, you could use all these free resources that we have. And then Mark asked about plugin conflicts. Uh, I mean, you know, Beaver Builders. Any, anything so specific friendly. there, Mark? No, I'm just thinking along the lines. We have a whole bunch of plugins right now, and you know, are there ones that don't don't work with it anymore? So because we're you you know we use the latest stuff on WordPress, right? Yeah, we haven't. Um, gosh, you know, the Beaver Builder is so user friendly. It works really well with, with a lot of plugins. So I haven't really come across any plugins that don't work with Beaver Builder. Um, but I'm trying to Google to see if anything shows up, but I don't really think anything is, has really like stood out. Known Beaver Builder incompatibilities. Okay, here we go. There might be just a few. Yeah, I'll just post that for you, just in case you're using any of these plugins. Okay. What else is there? Pricing, cost, white label, speed. Cool. I think I covered all the questions. Is there any more? <laughs> I can stick around for a little that's, more. It's like. good that you've got a list of of plug-in compatibility, things like that. Actually, I guess it's not really a question. It's kind of more of a comment. So I don't know if um, this is just my impression, but my impression with Gutenberg is that Gutenberg kind of wants to put page builders out of business. I mean, is that a true statement? How compatible is this with, how compatible is Beaver Builder with Gutenberg? And I mean, like I said, it's my impression. I've never used a page builder just from watching all their talks and talking about what they're trying to do with the block editor. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I, I don't know their, you know, what their strategy or long-term plans are, but, you know, the things with Beaver Builder is we've always uh, embraced Gutenberg because, you know, we embrace WordPress core and whatever WordPress core wants to put out there, we're going to make sure that we uh, go along with, go along with it. So Beaver Builder is completely compatible with Gutenberg. Um, there's no issues there. And we continue to uh, make sure that our plugin and features are compatible with it. So wherever they take it, we'll make sure that our stuff is gonna be uh, ready for uh, to be along the ride. But I think a lot of people um, wanna use Gutenberg as a page builder replacement, but uh, this is my humble opinion, but I feel like they, there's still a long way to go. <laughs> People talk about it not being as intuitive as like some of our page builders that are out there. So um, until they can smooth that all out, I don't know if, if it can be if they can replace it, replace page builders. Okay, thanks. Yeah, if I can add uh, my two cents, I, you know, you hear that talk a lot about you know that they're trying to replace page builders, but I I don't know. I mean, they're they're adding uh, features to the core. Um, I, I personally don't think page builders will go away. I mean, I, I think they'll always try to stay, you know, it, it, it is st still not, I mean, the, the, like Beaver Builder and Elementor and stuff are pretty easy to use still, you know, compared to, compared to Gutenberg, although Gutenberg, you know, is core, you know, um, but I think the, 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 the job of the page builders will be to stay out in front of whatever it is that's coming down the line in, in Gutenberg uh, or in core page builders are going to be basically staying out in front of that, you know? So, yeah, so maybe they, you could talk about we, that a little bit. What, what, what kind of things are you guys strategizing to offer that at any point, you know, the core doesn't have? Well, I think what you see with assistant it is definitely a lot of new technology that we've introduced into the WordPress space. Um, and we continue mm -hmm. to, we, we plan to continue to build upon that. And, you know, Beaver Builder is always going to continue to add new feature custom uh, features and we're always going to continue to prove that. But Assistant uh, really allows us to ex expand our capabilities to not only Beaver Builder, but other builders. So if you're using Divi, Elementor, 
um, Gutenberg uh, Assistant uh, allows you to use, you can use Assistant with the other page builders. And that's one of the things that we highlight on the website too, is it, it can be used on any page builder. Yeah, that's, I would, that's I would awesome. agree that they're, oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mark, or um, uh, Michael. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they're trying to put the page builders out of business. What they're doing is they're incorporating more and more power into core, but the page builders, you know, they keep, you know, expanding the functionality. I think when we start going to web three in the metaverse and stuff, the page builders are going to be huge on down the line. But I don't think, you know, WordPress itself is, op is open source, right? It's like, I mean, they're not trying to put anybody out of business. They're trying to make push down that functionality to any users. Beaver Builder and Elementor and some of these other ones have done that. But now they're starting to incorporate more functionality into the core block editor, which is great, right? But Beaver Builder continues to extend their functionality and it's, it's good for all people uh, all around. I think it's a long term. It's a great thing. Sorry if I rambled there. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And the beauty about WordPress is, is it's built on community and all these separate businesses that really come together to make it grow. All these plugin companies, themes, build page builders. That's why WordPress is like, I think power is over 40% of websites. I think I read somewhere last. 42. 42. So yeah. uh, it doesn't matter what tools you use uh, in WordPress. I think it all, we embrace it all. And I think it's just awesome that uh, we all continue to find ways to make sure that we're all compatible so that WordPress continues to grow. At the end of the day, you know, Beaver Builder is a WordPress, you know, is based off of, built off of WordPress. So we're always going to continue to put WordPress in the front. Yeah, uprooting that many sites, you know, would be really something. I mean, it, it, look at that 42% of, of his WordPress and a major chunk of that is done with page builders. I don't know people aren't going to uh, rebuild all those sites, you know, and uh, agencies where Beaver Builder is in, is embedded, they're going to continue using it probably, right? Yeah, whatever yeah. Uh, specific builder people use, they they tend to like to, you know, stick with it because they're familiar with it. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> nothing else nothing else if you're if you're speaking and i'm not answering you're probably muted <laughs> um well, but, uh, i really liked beaver themer when i was using it that ability to make different footers and headers on different pages was really cool i don't know if there's probably other ways to do it but i really liked how it worked thanks Aaron. i appreciate the feedback no yeah. All right, guys, anything else? Last call. So, all right, well, this one, uh, uh, it snuck up on me here. This is the first of the, you know, when it's on the first of the month, it sneaks up on you. <laughs> so anyway, we will be back at it on uh, August, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, April, whatever it is, uh, the fourth, I think, is what the next uh, meetup is, right? April 5th, looks like. First Tuesday of, uh, of the month there will be April 5th. And um, we will have um, Clifton from Clifton WP YouTube channel. There's a cool YouTube channel. If you want to get to know a guy that will be presenting you the next one, um, the YouTube channel is called Clifton WP. Uh, he's a great YouTuber. And uh, I reached out to him. Just so happens he's in Northern California. So he'll be... Uh, doing the uh, talk in, uh, in uh, April. So that'd be good. So, well, thank you, uh, Anthony. That was great. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I appreciate everyone's attention. And uh, yeah, yeah. Really good to get some, some, uh, a major, major player in the local, in, in the Sacramento community. Let me just put my email. If you, anyone had any questions that I wasn't able to answer, you can always reach me offline too. Cool. All right, folks. Uh, well, we will sign off and uh, catch you guys all in a month. Thank all right, you. Thanks, David. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Anthony.
See you guys.